We're here in the Port Chalmers Cemetery. It is a beautiful place with a great view. And we're looking for a grave in particular, which is the grave of William Hay Rennie. William Rennie was a school teacher at Papakayo, a tiny location in the Waitaki Valley. He was also a photographer. And as a photographer, he was a man with a secret. William was buried here at Port Chalmers. His mother was buried here a little bit later. His father, however, was buried in the old cemetery, not here in the new. And that's a bit of a mystery in itself because his father was a master mariner. And the anchors holding the chains around the grave, I've seen before, and they are the mark of a grave of a master mariner. But for some reason, Captain William Thompson was not buried here with his wife and his son William. Possibly, Captain Thompson was a little bit ashamed of how his son died and what they found afterwards. So we're on the Western Bypass, bypassing Omaru through the little town of Western and we're on Horse Gully Road about to meet up with the Waitaki Valley Highway and about to get to Papakayo and Georgetown and it is near the Papakayo Georgetown Cemetery that we are hoping to find the house occupied by schoolmaster, photographer and avowed misogynist William Hay Rennie. Um, yeah, so we've just talked to a friendly local who has confirmed that this house here, nearest the cemetery, is where Rennie was shot. We're here in the Papakayo Cemetery and William Hay Rennie was the local school teacher at the beginning of the 20th century. His father was a master mariner who lived at Port Chalmers, which is why that's where Rennie was buried. One morning, the woman who came in to do the housework for Mr Rennie uh, came in and um, the place was a bit of a mess. And he was lying in bed with his foot hanging over the side. And she really felt there was, uh, perhaps he was asleep and she should come back later. But then she came back later and found that William Rennie was dead. In fact, William Rennie had been shot twice in the head in his bed. It was a mystery. And detectives came to investigate. They went through the house and they found some rather unusual photographs, which they promptly destroyed. Now, the New Zealand Truth um, I remember the New Zealand Truth as, as the newspaper that a lot of people read but no one really admitted to. It did have quite, quite good sales in my lifetime. Back in 1906, the New Zealand Truth told the, the stories, or at least the parts of the stories, that the other newspapers didn't tell. And the New Zealand Truth knew the nature of the photographs that had been found in William Rennie's house. He was quite an avid photographer. He had a dark room. And... Truth reported upon the destruction of the photos in quite critical terms, saying that quite possibly they were the key to the whole mystery of why Rennie was murdered. They did find someone who might have murdered Rennie and they put him on trial. He must have had a good defence because he was found not guilty, or at least on the balance of circumstances, the jury did not feel able to convict him of the capital crime of murder. The same man was then later tried and convicted for breaking and entering Rennie's house. And it was quite clear that the only person who could have done the burglary was the same person who had shot Rennie. But he couldn't be tried for murder a second time, that was the law. But he was found guilty of burglary and theft and because he had form, 
he was declared an habitual criminal and he was incarcerated at His Majesty's pleasure, which basically meant a life sentence. And it was after, some years after, the murder of Rennie that part of the stolen property was found. In fact, they found his watch and they found a pistol, presumably the murder weapon. And the New Zealand Truth was able to report not only on that, because it was current news, but possibly after a passage of years, they were able to report upon the pictures. And I guess that the Truth reporter had known from the beginning what the pictures were. They found naked selfies that he had taken and developed. More than that, though, they found that Mr Rennie, an avowed hater of women, and certainly unmarried, had taken photographs that showed the faces of young local women in the area, and he had printed them onto the tops of the naked photographs of other women. They were the photographs that the detectives investigating the case saw and immediately destroyed. Though in fact, when the word got out, a lot of people thought that in fact the murderer might have been one of the subjects or a male relative of one of the subjects exacting revenge upon the photographer, school teacher, and really rather strange man, William Hay Rennie, who was murdered in the house next door in 1906.